Hey guys, what's going on? It's me, Will Patterson, and welcome back to a new video. The iPad Pro has become something that people are replacing their laptops with, and that is for many different reasons and ways. Obviously, now the iPad Pro is a lot faster than some of the MacBook Pros that you have out there. It's ridiculously fast in video editing, making music, and you can do a lot of word processing on there. But a question that I have been receiving, but not only a question that you guys have been asking me, but a question I've asked myself as well, is do I really need a computer anymore to do logo design and because I've been seeing a lot of people making the switch using the iPad Pro as their sort of workhorse everyday drive for everyday things I thought it would be interesting to see if I could use only the iPad in drawing a logo but not only drawing it but vectorizing it too professionally and I'm going to show you how I did it today and how you can do it also in this video, we're actually going to be giving away a iPad Pro. I've teamed up with Vectinator, which is the app that we use to create these logos in the video. And basically, they're gonna give one of you guys an 11 inch iPad Pro with an Apple Pencil and keyboard cover and loads more other goodies. Stick around till the end of the video to find out how you yourself can win an iPad Pro 11 inch. The first thing you need to do, like in any sort of video or anything that you're doing, is one, draw out your logo. So the first thing I did was I went into Procreate to start drawing. Now I like Procreate for all of my drafting and drawing because it's simple to use and it's something that I use all the time, really elegant and smooth. I created some guides and I started using my brush pens that I've created and some other people's brush pens inside of Procreate to see what I could get. Now I'm lettering out and making Vectinator into a logo type today. And I thought I'd go very Instagram-esque with it. Now the great thing about using a brush pen in Procreate is that you get the similar consistencies in the thicks and the thins, and it helps you when you're drafting later. So the idea of this is I'm gonna go over it with a few different brush pens to see what we can get out of it and to see if we can get some sort of shapes or some sort of like similarities in the lettering where we can like interlace them or to see if it works well in an actual script typeface. I didn't just try it in an Instagram y sort of script sense. I tried it with, you know, all capital script to see if it looked cool on there. I didn't really like the look of it because it kind of just looked a bit too childish and a bit too graffiti ish for this logo. The biggest challenge for me vectorizing this was getting the R's to look good against the rounded O's because they can be slightly tricky sometimes, especially when they don't connect. Once I got the actual lettering done or the logo with the brush pen done i went ahead and created a new layer and i load the opacity of the first now i do this exact same process that i'm doing on the ipad where i lower the opacity but with tracing paper in my home studio i use the ipad because i don't have to use paper anymore and it's just a lot easier using layers and i just lowered the opacity added a layer on top where i could start drawing it out and when I'm drawing it out, I'm getting rid of some of the sharp corners and I'm making sure that every line in the logo looks good and it's consistent. This step is what I call like the refinement stage. And I do this even when I haven't used a brush pen, just to make sure that the corners and everything is sort of working together to make this really nice and balanced logo type. And if I had more time when creating this logo, I would have gone ahead and made some guides with another layer to make sure that every single sort of thing thick and thin stroke in this logo was consistent. And not only that, in Procreate, you can use the quick shape tool for the rounded letter forms, such as the A or the O. This gives you a perfect circle that you can edit really easily in Procreate. Now, once you've finished your draft, you take that layer that you've just drawn on top of your brush layer, and we can copy that very easily by just going into the layer section at the top right of Procreate. Now, this is where it gets different and interesting for you guys, because we all know you can draw on the iPad, but we never knew that you can actually vectorize a logo professionally using horizontal and vertical anchor points on the iPad Pro for free. Now the sponsor of this video is Vectinator. Vectinator is a free vector drawing app on your iPad Pro. 
it's amazing. It gives you the ability to actually do everything you can in Illustrator when it comes to like, you know, making logo designs in the iPad. And it does it really intuitively with gestures and everything else. So what I did is I brought my revised and my better version of the drawn logo into Vector Native very easily by just copying it and pasting it inside of that. The cool thing about Vector Native is it has a pen tool inside it and it works basically the exact same way as Illustrator and other vector apps. The most important aspect of lettering or vectorizing your logo type designs or any shapes really is putting anchor points at the extremes of the curves. By that I mean if you were to create a box around your artwork like I'm doing here every time that that line or a line in the box would hit the work that is extreme level or the extreme line of your work so that's where you want an anchor point to be and you can see me doing it inside of this app every time i hit the top the bottom the left or the right side of a letter form with a curve in it that's where an anchor point goes and if you're just starting out with this pen tooling can be a bit tricky because you need to know where anchor points go but you also don't want to use too many of them you want to use as little anchor points as possible because if you use loads of them they're going to be really jittery and it's going to make your work look really bad now as you can see here i'm using my left hand and i'm basically using my two fingers and my three fingers and one finger depending on what i want to do with the handles if you're new to the pen tool of any type regardless of the app you know that the actual handles are what dictates how much of a curve you're going to get. So when I'm plotting my anchor points and I'm pulling out my handles, I use two fingers to constrain the handles to either a horizontal or a vertical axis. Again, this part of using the pen tool is super important, not only knowing where the anchor points need to be placed, but making sure that you're keeping the majority of your handles vertical and horizontal will make your life so much easier. So as you can see here, as I'm drawing out, I'm pulling out vertically by using my two fingers on my left hand here and pulling out. And what this does is it constrains the angle. Now using three fingers allows you to take control of one of the two handles in your bezier point, And it also constrains the angle to a horizontal or a vertical axis. You may have to rewatch everything that I've just said there because it can get really complicated when I'm talking about the pen tool. Basically, you're keeping everything horizontal and straight. There's a set of rules in this. So as I'm going along in this, you'll see me plotting out my anchor points and sometimes I'm changing them as I'm plotting them and sometimes I'm not. I'm mainly just plotting them out and I'm moving the handles later. So I'm worried about where the anchor points go first, which is at the top and the bottom of each shape. And then I'm worried about the handles later and I'm moving each handle in a way that it's sharing the pull or the weight of the line. Now, this is something that we could only previously do on Illustrator and on computer apps because there was no initial way or an intuitive way of plotting anchor points and using touch gestures. But honestly, I can surely say that using Vectinator, which is a completely free app, by the way, is going to change the way you do your work because of its intuitive ways of using this left hand or if you're left-handed, your right hand to plot anchor points and to pull those handles. So again, as I'm going through this logo, I'm making sure that each letter is consistent with the other ones. And again, the great thing about plotting your anchor points and your handles like this makes it very easy to edit and change. Sometimes you'll see me move anchor points into positions that are easier for me to basically get a good curve. And I'm worried about only two things when I'm doing this. One, where's your anchor points going? And two, where the handle's going? And with that, it allows me to get a really nice straight or curved line. Now, don't be afraid if you're scared of doing this. Vectinator isn't just good for a pen tool. It's got shape tools in there too. For instance, when I'm shaping or pen tooling the O's out or the A's or anything rounded, I'm actually just using the circle tool. This is the easiest way of actually getting a really consistent than O without using the pen tool. And towards the end, you can see me, I'm zooming in, I'm zooming out, I'm changing little things and moving different things into different places. But you can see that the O's have got shapes inside shapes. So we need to get rid of that. Well, thankfully for any logo designer out there who needs this, there is a Pathfinder option inside of Vectinator Pro. So you can really edit anything in Vectinator. I've teamed up with Vectinator on this video so that you guys could get a free iPad Pro. 
Click the link down below in the description to see the rules on how you can win yourself an iPad Pro. I am very excited to be giving this to you guys. Thank you so much Vectinator for sponsoring this video. Guys, if you haven't done so already, and if you like this video, press the like button. If you hated it, press the dislike button twice. Also remember to press that red subscribe button down below, turning on post notifications, because if you want to see videos like this, the only way for you to see that is if you put all your notifications on on YouTube for me. Have a great day, have fun drawing in Vectinator, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. See you soon. Goodbye.